We are on our way to FDR Campground, which is in Pine Mountain, which is near Columbus, Georgia. So this is the first time we've been over here. It's not near as far as I thought it was. I thought it was, what, like three and a half hours. But we have made it here in about how long, Trav? Uh, two and a half. We stopped some, so it made it closer to three. Always a stop. I mean, if you can get through a trip without a stop, congratulations. We are those folks. No, so this is uh, <laughs> near Callaway Gardens, which may be familiar to a lot of people. Right. It's got a little later start. A little later start. Had to uh, go pick up the camper. Had some things done to it. We'll be sharing that on a video. It, it may that video may have already aired, but uh, was cutting it close. Cutting it close on whether we were actually going to be able to go or not. But we made. We were freaking out. I was like, "What are we going to do? You need to call them and tell them we're picking up our camper right now." But. Um, I'm glad that they kept it and did some things to it. We had taken the battery off the front of it to save space and didn't quite understand that that battery is what powered the lights. Travis doesn't care that it's dark in there, but we soon realized that the lights wouldn't work inside anymore. And if they did work, it was just for a second and then the breaker would pop. So um, pro tip is don't remove your battery if you want the lights inside to work because it won't. So they reconnected the battery for me. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> he did not want to reconnect that battery. He wanted that, that whole six inches that battery took up. Um, needed that space, I guess. But we need lights in there. It gets dark and the kids and we're stumbling around and just for sleeping. So you don't, you see, you don't Whatever. Try. We put some lights in the ceiling. The battery it. died in them. The battery died. And then I didn't have like a million extra batteries. Whatever. We are going to have lights. I hope and pray. So we're about 10 minutes away. Thankfully the time has changed. Uh, so it's not going to get dark to 8 o'clock. It's about 7 o'clock now. And uh, We'll get there and I can get this thing put up pretty quick, about 30 minutes. Let Brooklyn and the kids go run around while I get it put up. And uh, hopefully the camp host uh, has not gone to bed yet because I need to uh, barter some firewood. <laughs> barter. <laughs> we'll be like, oh, we'll trade you some pork chops. <laughs> For some firewood. Maybe a bowl of chili tomorrow. A bowl of chili tomorrow. Yeah. I hope you remember tomatoes. Yes, I, just, I got them. I, got them. Ooh, I was I got scared them. to tell you that. I thought if I told you on camera, you'd be nicer. I got them. <laughs> okay, good deal. We like to, we don't always do this, but because our children are used to eating so early, if we're getting in a campground around this time, we go and pull through somewhere and get them a quick snack so we are not so crunched for setting it up dinner time and so forth because I don't y'all all know how children act when they're hungry they just they're hangry and they melt down so everyone has been fed and um, they're just ready to go including Travis I've Travis. been fed as well <laughs> I get hangry sometimes <laughs> so, uh, um, everyone has been nourished everybody has been nourished with yeah. some greasy fast food except and, me I didn't eat because I, I was under the impression that Travis and I were eating later didn't know that that was dinner um, so I'll be eating a turkey sandwich tonight but that's okay we'll be good all right, well, we are about to pull up here. So I'm excited to see our campsite. We we're trying to decide if I had booked the site or if Travis had booked it. So if it's great, I booked it. If it's horrible, he booked it. So we'll see how that goes. But it is dried out. And um, again, we have picked the coldest weekend to go camping. I, I had put up every winter clothing I owned because we've been in shorts and t-shirts um, for the last two or three weeks. And I said, oh, it's not going to get cold again. Y'all, the low is 36 and the high is 56 or 40. So I scrounged around. You know what that means. What that's, does that mean? That's good fire building. Oh, God. Good can't wait. I can't wait. Every day brings new light. To help us on our way Always taking my breath Whether sun or rain So you can see behind me here kind of the, the looks of this place. Yeah, I just want to go up. It looks just like the mountains, but 
it's a lot quicker to get here than it is the North Georgia mountains. I've been to Callaway one time when I was like a kid, but never been here to Pine Mountain. And I don't really know why. Two and a half hours away from the house and you feel like you're way up in the North Georgia mountains. It's really, really cool. Beautiful, beautiful place. Absolutely huge place. But uh, looks just like the mountains. And it's cold this weekend, so it feels just like the mountains. The wind will carry us over that horizon we see. So I went to go take a shower and I come back and Brooklyn's out here building a fire. Tell us about your first fire building experience. <laughs> I would have already built a fire, but you always take over and don't let me. And I was like really excited and then you come up and I'm like, oh. <laughs> you about to say I did something wrong. So you, you've been paying attention? Yeah, well look who else has been paying attention. Titus just threw that in there. Yes. Tata, what are you doing? I throw that in there. You, you building a fire? Uh, I love building it all the except for a fire. Okay. Be careful. Oh, dear. We've already, okay, what time is it? 10 o'clock? We've already watched a movie, eaten breakfast, gotten our pants completely disgusting, and a pair of shoes wet. So I feel like it's been a productive camping morning. Um, this place is gorgeous. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite because I'm not allowed to say that apparently, but I love it. It is, I feel like we're in North Georgia. I mean, it has everything we ever want. These beautiful woods, large campsites. Who's over there? <laughs> he needed a moment. He'd been out in the wild too long. And I said, okay, you earned 10 minutes. And now he's cold because he's out here without pants on because his pants are wet. We got there he is. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> so Brooklyn left some um, cinnamon rolls on our picnic table outside. It appears somebody has found it. Let me see if I can sneak up on him. Oh, he's running away now. He saw me. You can see that tin foil there under the table. That's the culprit right there. He's been over there enjoying him a sweet little cinnamony snack. Brooklyn's over there trying to feed him now. Guys, look at this. So apparently a few weeks ago, it hasn't been long, this Airstream com totally combusted, as you can see. I'm in this Georgia RV Facebook group and someone who was here posted it the day it happened and said it was just, I think, a small gas leak or something where she had left something on that you weren't supposed to do. Praise the Lord, the woman was not hurt, but totally. I mean, just like blew up. Everyone who is here was commenting on the post and said it sounded like a bomb went off and they were terrified. But I just couldn't imagine if this had happened. I just think that's so crazy. I don't know what's still here though. I don't know if they're keeping it here for insurance purposes or what they're doing. But um, as you can see, they've marked it off. We can't go see it. This is why we Let's go. And people used to walk yeah, right here. Yep, Native it's Americans. Millions years ago. I don't know about millions, but Native Americans used to walk around here. Mama, come to see the quake here. A quake. A quake is here. A quake is right here. This is why we live. Oh, uh, almost, almost. That's all of my horns. What are you doing up there, Tata? Uh, 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 I'm gonna quit up there. I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna quit on my feet. Bubba, you wanna tell me about who you got right there? Oh, uh, I got Ronnie. He's a rhino beetle and look what he's doing. Ronnie the rhino beetle? Ronnie. 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 <laughs> okay, we'll just walk. When the mountain calls and the river waits for what's to come, a dreamer's day. 
So if you go way back to uh, one of our first pop-up videos, or maybe the second or third one. Are you about one. to make fun of me? No, I'm not at all. Uh, we were cooking chili, and uh, Brooklyn was, we were talking about how uh, she likes to cook chili a lot. Well, we've been on chili suspension for quite a few camping That trips. was the last time I've cooked chili. At Hard that's Labor it. Creek, that was we it. cooked chili. So it's been six, seven months. It's been a little while. A little while. It's chili tonight, so we're gonna have some Pumped. chili. We're gonna do it in the Dutch oven over the fire. Yes. And uh, it's gonna be good stuff. Have some bowls of chili, some chili dogs. Chili dogs, grilled cheeses. Chili it up. Yeah, hopefully it won't be nine o'clock when we eat. Yeah, <laughs> let's show you how we're gonna do it. So we've got some nice fire here going. I like this grate here because you can lower it and raise it in several different positions. We've got our Dutch oven there. A little oil in there, got our hamburger meat in here browning, just gonna kind of chop that up to uh, get it nice and have a little bitty pieces here for our chili. All right, now our meat is brown, so uh, I don't need this thing quite as hot as it is now for the rest of the process, but got my nice little gloves on here. So I'm gonna pick this up, set it over to the side, and we'll raise this up a little bit because we're just gonna kind of simmer this chili. We don't need it near as hot as we did with uh, browning that hamburger meat. And we should be able to keep the fire hot enough to keep a nice little um, simmer going on right here. Set her back up there. Now it's time to add all the other good stuff. All right, so now we're gonna come in with a jar or two of our homemade tomatoes. This is from our garden. We put these up last year. We'll probably take a couple jars, but uh, we'll just see. I don't want it super runny. We'll put one in there. And then Abram got our beans washed for us. We like all kind of different. Uh, I got some inside there. Yep, just a medley of beans. We got those washed. Dump those in there. Let's do one more can. Made us here. Then we'll go in with two packets of our seasoning here. Daddy, is that from <laughs> No. Oh yeah. All right, so we'll get it stirred up here. Sometimes we'll add some tomato paste to kind of thicken it up, but I don't do that unless I see that it needs thickening. So we'll just kind of see what happens here with it and add some of that if necessary. I'm starting to think we won't need any tomato paste. It looks pretty thick. So we'll just let this sit here, hopefully come to a simmer. If we need to, we'll add some more wood down there, but uh, I think it's hot enough to get a good simmer going right here. Just let all that kind of do its thing. Well, I had to lower the grate. I couldn't quite get the fire hot enough with that thing all the way up. So lowered it down there. Got us a nice little simmer going on there. Looking pretty good. And uh, I'm leaving the top off of it. Just let it kind of thicken up a little bit before we get ready to eat it.